Hey, welcome to shop. First segment in mold. You want to see how I did it? Stay tuned. Before I get started on this project here, I thought I, I never I never had showed you guys this finished product here. This is a what they call a snake trimmer. It's basically a 410 shotgun. Uh, like so. And my, it belonged to a friend of mine. And he had busted the stock, so you don't. You shoot them like this anyway, you don't put them against your shoulder, they just kick too hard. So I told him, I said, well, I'll make you, I'll make you a pistol grip. I didn't tell him I'd make him a forearm, he hadn't even seen it yet, it's been a while. But anyway, there, here's, here's the end product right here. You can put three spare shells right here. I thought it turned out real nice. Anyway, that's, uh, that's not the subject of this video, but I thought I'd show it to you. This, this bucket, this five gallon bucket is just plumb full of walnut scraps from over the years. I mean, there's just all kinds of pieces in here, you know, here and there. And the reason I say it is I figure, well, somehow I'm going to make something. Well, I made that. I done all that uh, little shotgun here with scraps out of this bucket. Now what I do is I take an ice cream bucket and I screw down a 4x4 four four piece of one. You know, I, I don't know yet. I'm just going to have to get over here and do a bandsaw and whittle them off. And, you know, I might have to put my cut through gloves on because some of them might be small. And they're just, you know, look, at all this, look at all this. I mean, surely we've got to find a use for all this stuff other than sawdust here. That's actually pretty nice. That, that would make a lid for something. Here's a piece of walnut right here. It has some pretty sap wood in it. So uh, I'm going to get over here and start whittling and put. I've got the uh, ice cream bucket filled full of chunks of walnut. Had to sort of force it into the pressure pot. I may never get it out. Except maybe in pieces, but uh, it's in there. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I use Art and Glow. Work wonderful. Good. Good. Put the top on, Larry. I will. Thank you. Can't overfill because I got the regulator set for that. There you go. Well, last night I was laying awake just doing a little thinking. Actually, I think this was my first segmented bolt. Huh. You want to call it that? <laughs> well, this might be a mistake. I don't know. Wouldn't be the first one ever made, but I decided to go with red with some gold pearl. Uh oh, didn't mean to do that. I'm trying to show it to you with some gold with some red pearl in it. Not red, I'm sorry. Going with red with gold pearl. But this is a little bit of mineral. Just in case it runs over or something. Hopefully it won't stick. taking it out of the pressure pot, but it is. Other than the mold spreading on me, which cost me to use a lot more resin, I can't I can't find any bubbles or anything. I think it just turned out absolutely perfectly as far as that part's concerned. Uh, I've got it between the centers. Uh, on this end here, you can't see it, but I drilled my one inch hole to put my drive, my uh, spur drive in there so it won't come out. And on this end, I also I use the step drill to drill that so this will fit in there so it just can't come out. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now is because my 4x4 got crooked somehow, so you know, it would be hard to put a face plate on it. Uh, and all this crap's in the way. 
So I'm going to turn this down, you know, down to like a nubbing right here so I can put my face plate on it. And then I'll, when I get the face plate on, I'll flip it around. We'll start, we'll start working on it in earnest. So let's see what we're going to do here. Better get my face shield on. This might be a little rough to begin with. I, one reason I like doing it my way is I, I'm, I'm not afraid to pour all this thing up pretty fast now. Which if I if I use the normal between centers uh, scenario, there ain't no way in hell I'd turn it over about 200 RPM. But I'm going to turn this to the point that it vibrates. Let's see what we got. Starting to vibrate a little bit right here. Right uh, there's vibrating a little bit, and I'm at 850 RPM. Right uh, there, so I'll back off to it smooth out. Some people go through that vibration, and I, I can't seem to get through it. So here we go, I'm going to use a beaver. Center, that heavy sap sucker might have been on my foot. So that proves my point right there. End of discussion. Don't take too many revolutions to lose your burden. You couldn't raise it. 
raisins. <laughs> Raisin. Without a doubt, the best tool for using for this is uh, carbide. Alright, dude. Looking good, my friends. Looking good. I know, here we go. Oh, yeah, this picks it right up. Give me a. See how this, this end grain right here? If I, if I get that to dry tonight or tomorrow, tomorrow morning, that'll clean up just really good. Alright, see you. I think everybody should know by now what my normal protocol for making this type of bowl is. But in case you don't, I'll repeat it. So I went out back and I found myself a piece of you know, one inch walnut. I went ahead and uh, cut me two pieces out of it. This uh, walnut here, this, is, this will be the base and this will be the ring for the top. Now, when I get about half of this hollowed out from the bottom, <clears throat> I will glue this one on, on there with 2,000 pound epoxy, wait for it to sit up and turn the tenon in it, flip it around, and then do the, the other side until I meet the other hollowing point. So that's how I do it. <clears throat> about 1,011 RPM. So here goes nothing. Well, I'll put a brand new spick and span <clears throat> carbide cutter on here. A friend and myself went together and bought a box of them off one of these metal places. So they were pretty cheap. So I'll have a massive sharpening one of these days when I get them all dull. So let's whip it up and whirl it up and see what we got. That old 4x4 four four shoe is punky, isn't it? It made a difference. All right, I'm getting ready to mix up some epoxy and get this here. There you go. Two ton epoxy. I'll mix that up and get that glued on and we'll be back in a minute. This doesn't take near as much as a lot of people mix up, including myself. It just needs a thin coat on both sides. And as usual, I use the bottom of a Coke can. I'm going to take the square cutter and come in here and try to clean this up where it you know, flows into this right here. A little better than that does.
made himself a beaver and he, he brought it over and I tested it for him. It worked pretty good, a little lighter than mine. Well, good morning, fellas. Set up quite well. I got it no more centered than I thought I did, so I'm gonna come in here with the round cutter and you know clean this up. I did put a little super glue right in here. Saw a couple places I didn't like. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and then I'll go around and fish this lip. I don't know what the design's gonna be. It'll be what I end up with, I guess. Well, let's see what we got here. All right, I'm going to come in here and clean this lip off. I'm going to tape her in right here, bring it like this. back and sand it with 320. Put a couple more coats on it and then I'm going to take it off and work on the bottom. Well, I'm finishing this bowl with uh, spray poly. I turn it real slow. Here's what I'm using right here. Uh, I turn it real slow, sit off in a distance like this. Inside. And I will, I will let it turn in and, until it dries. This way you get real smooth finish and uh, no runs. Uh, I started to go ahead and buff this. But, uh, I don't normally buff the inside and I was going to spray it. And I got a little bit out here. That's the way I want to have. So, there you go. That's fine. Well, I've got, I've got the uh, bowl off the lace. And my intent was to show you a new technique that we used to use on show cars, which I built many of, and that is to uh, put a, a heavy coat or two or four or five of the top coat and then wet sand that and buff it.
But you know, I got it off this morning, and it's just almost perfect. And, you know, why fix something that ain't broke? So I'm not going to do that. Maybe the next one. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now, oh, remember, second thing I wanted to show you. You know how all the destruction say to really scrape the bottom and stir it and all that kind of stuff over and over and over? Well, yes, I make a mistake or two every once in a while. I have it in I didn't stir one out really, really good because I usually drain my cups in here. It's this old pin, pin mold. And, you know, the plan is eventually when it fills up, I'll break it down and make pin blanks out of it. But this, this is the last one right here. And I see, what has that been now? Three days? And every day I didn't stir one of them because look, it's still sticky on top. Now it will eventually set up. I put it in a toaster oven and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's exactly what happens when you don't follow the instructions. The, other, the, other, the third thing I want to talk to you about real quick before we get on with this. I just bought another gallon of epoxy. And I have come to the conclusion uh, this label means nothing. This is the exact same stuff that I bought that cost $20 more. Uh, what was it called? Uh, glow and something. Art and Glow. This is identical to it, and this was $20 cheaper. This is, uh, is on Amazon. It's Epoxy IT80. And it's, you know, it looks the same. It's got the same work time. It's got the same setup time. You might see better, or you can see better. Well, I guess it's a weight game now. I probably won't touch it again until tomorrow. All right, the bottom's all set up now, so I'm going to go ahead and and get it all nice and flat, and then I'll be taking it over the laser and putting my signature in it, and I can start putting sealer on it. So I can start out with 80 grit. I'm going to head over to the laser and get that done, and I'll be back. Well, I'm getting good use out of that elevator I built in the bottom of this. Uh, you see, you can see it. You can see the opening at the bottom. I've got it where I can raise and lower that down to quite a few inches. All right, I got it all set up and centered, and I've got my, uh, I guess you call it signature all done. Here we go. Well, here's your finished product. My first segmented bowl. Now guys, I never said nothing about these segments going to line up and make anything. So there you are. I think it turned out pretty nice. The inside turned out good. I really like the bottom. I like that uh, way I did that. Have one little air bubble right there. I guess I stepped away too long because I didn't do this in a pressure pot. I could have, and I actually I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. So there you are, my friends. Well, that's pretty. So, you know, if you enjoy what I do, maybe you learn something. I'd appreciate you uh, subscribing, telling your friends. All that kind of normal stuff. Give me a like. Call your mama. And keep them whirling.